And actually, that that I love to uh, to learn more about the the DSO Cremorne project. So, um, my yeah, and I first heard about it at at your DSO showcase. But but it's fascinating for me that you have companies that are demanding these skills that normally would be or are competing for for the same sort of uh, individuals uh, with with these digital skills. But they're collaborating and they're also working with, uh, with Kangen Institute, uh, a local vet provider. So, so yeah, how did that all come, come about? And what, yeah, what, what is that Cremorne project about? It's very interesting. Um, we learned through uh, our board and through uh, contacts down in Melbourne that uh, there, and we knew at a national level that there is a huge shortage of appropriately skilled people in, for digital employment. Um, the Kangaroo and Cremorne um, business precinct uh, has a lot of uh, very successful Australian-based companies such as MYOB, REA, car sales, live tiles, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, they call themselves frenemies in that they work <laughs> somewhat closely together, but in the um, employee, the, the skills talent pools, uh, they are currently forced to poach off each other recklessly. Mm. So um, they identified the problem. Kangan TAFE is uh, situated geographically right in the middle of, um, of that tech hub. Uh, they identified the problem and realised that the more traditional methods of delivering training wasn't working because it takes too much time. It's too broad in nature, uh, not specifically fit for purpose. And because of its um, size, it, it struggles to keep up with you know, the, the changing technology. Um, so we got in touch with Kangan. Um, we offered the DSO skills development model, which um, has a slightly different focus on how training is delivered. It's very much skills-based mm -hmm. and it's very much employer-led. So through a, a process of sort of analysing and designing, uh, we're engaging with the, the various businesses to understand exactly what their skills needs are um, again, digital is, um, is, is slightly different because it's utilised in different ways in different contexts. Um, in some high-tech industries, you know, a data analyst has a very specific um, skill set requirement um, and a very specific uh, progression up uh, the paths of proficiency. However, in lots of other environments, you know, digital is used in different ways. Uh, in retail, for instance, uh, uh, a regional sales manager will need to understand a little bit about data analytics because they need to understand their sales, the trends, what's working, what's not working, that kind of thing. They probably need to know a little bit of UX, UI because they need to understand how, you know, with the online aspects of their trading, how can they best impact and reach the customers that they have analysed want their stuff from their data analytics. So, you know, they don't need to be super experts at data analytics but understanding the base tools, the concepts, how to translate information into insights that improve the business um, are critical skills. And if you're still floundering around chopping and changing individual spreadsheets on Excel, uh, you're not making the most of the, of the capability that digital has. So with that complex, everybody wants something different um, mm. paradigm around, um, the employer-led focus of, of our model is to have that close relationship at the front end with the employers. Overall, um, you know, we believe that local problems need local solutions. So the national frameworks that we're building are to enable, you know, assurance, uh, consistency of description, so people can call apples with apples and when you're an employer, you know that this phrase means this guy can do this thing. However, you also need to have the flexibility that you can build what you need at the time. So engaging these employers, understanding exactly what their skills and needs are, linking to the right talent pools. And here's another important part of the model, um, understanding the talent pools and also having each individual have a real self-understanding of what they want to do, where they thrive, where their skills lies. I talked earlier about skills transferability, you know, understanding where good paths for them to be successful, to enjoy and to be able to contribute uh, is very important part of that sort of selection process as well. So you've got the employers understanding what they need and being able to describe that accurately in digital skill sets. Also, not forgetting the fact that tech skills are just a small part 
of how you operate in a, in a workplace, mm -hmm. lots of other skills, you know, how to problem solve, communicate, um, those kind of things uh, are, are very important as well and should be blended into any sort of training. So as you build the tech training, you also build your understanding of how you operate. And of course, everybody operates different. So again, that employer-led training to enable the people who are going to be employed by those um, employees are getting built into the company culture, the company way of operating right from day one. So when that initial bite of uh, tech training supported by the um, the more horizontal type training is completed, they're actually pretty much ready to step into the um, workplace and be productive from day one because you know they've been trained in how to do it as they go. Um, so front end loading a lot of things that maybe traditionally that did, didn't uh, happen or it didn't happen as with as much focus as, as what we're aiming to do, and it, it's been picked up exceptionally well. Um, small bite-sized training just in time is far more efficient than a nine-month training course where you have forgotten most of the things you've learned until you're refreshed about it later on. So get what you need, practice it on the job, have that mentorship, the support from within the organization, within the businesses to develop their workforce, come back, do some more uh, institutionalized type training for another small bite to you know, increase your skills. And you keep moving down, you know, the ultimate pathway, which we call lifelong learning, which means you're always learning, you're always updating, and you're able to actually path your way as you wish. And that also enables the, um, the businesses to path their skills development um, within their organization to make sure their workforce has the right capability. Mm -hmm.